This conference will now be recorded. I call to order the meeting of December 21st of the Planning Zoning Commission. Can we call a roll, please? Chair Marsh? Here. Vice Chair Carey? Here. Member Hennigan? Present. Member Hutchins? Here. Alter Member Lemming? Here. Member Kosinski was absent with no one. Thank you. Okay, can we rise and thank the legion? Thank the legion. 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 Comments from the commission and the commissioners. Very done. We'll move on. Um, I'll ask for any public comments. Okay, doing great. <laughs> All right, last one. Approval of the minutes of the last meeting. I move we approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, since we have a fairly lengthy agenda this morning, we're going to try and move it along as quickly as possible. Um, can I ask Tracy, can the commissioners remove their masks? Because I know it's difficult to hear the people that are. Yeah, you have the shields and you're six feet away. You either have the shield or you're six feet away. So if you'd like to take it down, you may. You don't have to. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the people that are listening online. Okay. Um, hearing no comments, uh, let's move on to the first development plan, um, which is 95 Island Drive South. Um, is the applicant here? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Before anything, just where we can. Will anyone wishing to speak on this item please stand and raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? When you come forward, please state your name and address clearly for the record and whether or not you have this warning, and please speak directly into the microphone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Annie Carruthers. I'm an architect and principal of Insight Design Group. The address is 1546 Jackson Street, Hollywood, Florida. I'm oh, sorry, I have to interrupt. Um, Chair Marsh, you have to call for any ex parte communications first. Thanks, Rachel. If you will. Mm -hmm. Are there any ex parte uh, communications with any of the commissioners? No. 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 Thanks. Sorry. Yes. My address is 1546 Jackson Street, Hollywood, Florida, 33020. We had presented this project as a new single family residence at 95 Island Drive South. Um, in the, the, the previous GRB hearing. And we had some comments um, regarding a, a few items. What I'd like to do is just take you through uh, how we have addressed those items that were based on your comments. So um, among some of the first comments were relative to the architecture. We also do have the landscape architect here, who after my um, notes on all of the items that we adjusted, will also have a short presentation for you as well on the changes that we made to address those comments. Okay, so the first one was relative to the front elevation. And one of the comments was relative to the height of the garage. So uh, what we did is, so uh, I believe that it was basically just saying that the height was a little bit higher and it was a very strong element in the front. And so what we did is uh, we lowered the entire garage two foot four. We lowered the garage door and the architectural feature next to it. We lowered it two foot four. So that was a change that we made to the front. I do have the other elevation as well, so we can compare. And I think that uh, another um, issue was that the way that we had shot it in the rendering was kind of straight on, and it was it was very strong. 
Um, that's not necessarily how you will see the whole as a whole of the house. Um, so I think that uh, it definitely uh, made an effect on the on the front elevation. Um, another one of the comments relative to the front was the amount of windows. So this we studied a little bit because um, one of my responses during that meeting was that we did in fact had an extensive amount of windows. So going back, we did realize that we had almost 40% of the front in windows and openings. Uh, you know, in comparison to some of the other contemporary homes that had been approved previously, we felt that that was a good balance. Um, I had mentioned that some of the negative space was a pause that you needed in the architecture. So we kind of uh, maintained that, uh, you know, that level of windows. We felt that that was uh, very appropriate in comparison to some of the other ones in the area as well. However, there was a comment on the side elevations that there wasn't enough windows. I think in general, we were speaking about windows. And so what we did is we did add several windows to the side uh, in order to embellish some of the side elevations. And that is in your new package, but I've also highlighted it here um, in this illustration. So what we did was we added two windows to the north and two windows to the south which broke up that expanse of negative space on the second floor, which was requested of us. So we did add that and you see that highlighted here. Also, there was um, a comment regarding the rear. And the comment was that the rear, um, I think the notes was more to ground the rear. Um, it was kind of relative to the thinness of the columns it was a lot of very thin columns and it needed a bit more grounding. So what I did was I did embellish one of the main columns in the corner. We wrapped it in stone and made it stronger and heavier and wider and deeper. So this column is the one that we addressed that comment with, which was here. And we took it from a more of a pin column to a stronger column that would relate to the architectural column on the other side. So that was a change we made as well. Okay, I think that those were some of the changes we made and I'm going to pass it along to uh, Paul Catania. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Paul Catania. I'm a partner at Parker Yanetti Design Group, landscape architect for the project. Our address is 825 South US Highway 1, Jupiter, Florida, 33477. Unfortunately, last time at the review, I wasn't here, so I wasn't able to kind of walk you through the proposed landscape plan. Um, but today, what I did was uh, brought a graphic that may help give you a little bit more visual of. The contrast between where the planting is and where the hardscape and house is. Just kind of hold that up here for you to see. Um, what I'd like to do is, is essentially just walk you through the plan real quick and kind of run through, you know, each property as far as the front yard, the two side yards, and the rear yard. And the front yard, um, with the utilization of the hoop system for the septic, we were able to gain more space for planting. And what we have in the front is a nice cluster of three coconut palms on the south east corner of the property. And underneath that, what I'd like to do is introduce a califilum Brazilian beauty leaf tree. The neighbor to the south has also proposed a califilum on their plan. So I thought that might be a nice tie-in where we have that overall canopy theme going there with the coconut palms above that to help soften the house. Um, in front of the house, Right at the street, I'm proposing a Canary Island date palm. I know we wanted to get some, some more massing up front, and I believe one of the comments has suggested a tree. Um, unfortunately, we have power lines overhead right there. I think the right thing to do would be propose a specimen palm that we know what the extent of that canopy size is going to be, as opposed to a large canopy tree that may ultimately interfere with the power lines. And then on the northeast corner of the property, 
Uh, we have a large coconut palm that is going to swing out over the driveway. It's going to be curved. It'll soften that elevation of the house. And beneath that, I'd like to propose a uh, pitch apple tree. And between the pitch apple tree and the um, Brazilian beauty leaf, that'll kind of anchor the two corners of the property at kind of the mid upper level. And then we'll have a combination of coconut palms above that to really give a nice canopy in the front. Um, right at the front of the house, I also have a four stem uh, at an idiot palm. It's going to be about 18 feet tall. And that'll give a nice presentation right at the front without blocking too much, but give a little bit of texture, a little bit of height. Uh, if you move to the north side of the property, what we have are uh, privacy hedges along the side where the equipment is. And I've also proposed some tall Christmas palms. Uh, currently, the neighbor to the north has a large existing a hedgerow of, of fishtail palms, and it's doing a great job of giving some buffer in between the two properties. Um, unfortunately, we were asked by the town engineer to remove an existing Motocarpus U hedge um, that is in our property, but it is within the drainage easement. It's 10 feet tall right now, and it's extremely dense. Um, I'm asking that maybe we reconsider allowing us to keep that because right now it provides excellent buffer between our property and the property to the north. Um, as you move further into the rear yard, uh, we've got a combination of grubs and ground covers with some Christmas palms to provide some canopy and some accent. On the southwest corner of the property, the, the neighbor to the south has existing coconut palms. What I'd like to do is add to that mass with some additional coconut palms so that we have nice screening from the second story balcony. And below that, a uh, nice presentation of three blue Latan palms, um, which I believe are, we have some out front here at the town hall building, beautiful palm, uh, give us a nice texture, it'll handle the wind and it'll handle the salt. And then as you continue down the south uh, property line, just a continuation of coconut palms at staggered heights to give us that, um, you know, canopy and buffer that we need, and also a uh, continuation of a small leaf lucia hedge that we'll maintain for, for privacy at the lower level. Um, and that concludes my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Well, before we have any comments from the commission, um, you have some artificial turf, don't you? Yes. Yes, we have artificial turf in the rear, uh, just in the rear yard, and it is separated by- Can you just indicate where that is? Yes, sir. It's right in here. And then just a little patch right in here. I guess my question, and this is maybe to staff, it seems like there's a lot of coverage still on this property in terms of impervious. Have we, we've gone through that calculation, Ronnie? Um, or uh, for it, um, Chair, Chair Marsh, um, if you go back, um, we need to have it, the town staff make a presentation okay. first, and then yeah, just uh, while we had. Yeah, but okay. we really gotta do that that okay. way first. Have the town staff make a presentation, and then um, move to public comment before sure. we make questions. Okay. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um, we'll. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Nice presentation. Um, so. Corey or Durani, if you have any comments to make, or um, Tara, if you have any comments on the engineering, the drainage, and the question about the head in the drainage easement. No comments? Mr. Chairman, just uh, regarding the synthetic turf, reviewed it in the initial review and applied with code at the time. Uh, to my knowledge, there were no changes made to the art to the synthetic curve for uh, amount being proposed. So it is within code requirements. Okay, thank you. And Durani and Corey, does the project now meet all of the town codes? Good morning. Durani guys with an official. So um, the portion of the um, 
and I focus on is the vertical aspect of it. Um, looking at the window size, and do we have the required uh, minimum sizes for the uh, living spaces, and do we have the required windows? And at that level, it has met the minimum requirements um, for this level of review. So once we have um, building permits, a further review would be done looking at more um, mechanical, electrical, and um, you know, any piece, uh, both with regards to the vertical aspect of it and the building, which is the portion I'm looking at. I, I um, have no issues uh, with this plan. And Corey, does it meet all the zoning codes? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. So regarding the drainage easement, um, we asked to remove those existing trees because just like we did on Inlet K, once those trees get into the pipe system, then the drainage is going to be compromised. So, which can be cumbersome to that road and the drainage. Thank you. Do we go to the public now? Or? Yeah, public comment. Uh, public comment. Okay. Yeah, two minutes. Yeah. Okay, anybody in the public audience have any comments? Hearing none, I'm going to pass it on to the commission. Entertain any comments that the commission may have? Uh, when we get to landscaping, I'll have a I'll have a comment on landscaping. Okay, that's yeah. Thank you. Any concerns of the building architecture? I will just say I I appreciate the effort taken to listen to some of the suggestions that were made, and I think you've responded very. Um, so I commend you on that. Um, you want the comments on the building? Comments on our on landscape? You know? uh, I also would like to comment you on the changes you made to the garage, because uh, that is that quartering view is the view as you come around the bend uh, to look at that property. Uh, can you give me a, a the landscape architect, please? Could you give me a sense of the the trunk size of that date palm? Because I, I'm I'm still I'm still not convinced that a solo tree, a solo palm tree in that particular area is, is going to take away the height massing of, of the house since the lot is going to be raised. Sure. So um, Canary Island date palms right now we've got it specified uh, see to be 10 foot clear trunk which would put it at about 22 feet overall. Uh, the typical caliper size of a Canary Island date palm trunk, probably anywhere from 24 to 30 inches in diameter. Majority. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, at that, you know, it's in perpetuity. I mean, at a young age, it's, it's very wide. Um, so it, it starts off at 24 inches wide, anywhere from 24 to 30 inches in diameter. And that's what it would be throughout and then as far as the canopy size the spread on a canary island date palm is typically uh, anywhere from 23 to you know 25 feet is are you familiar with the the house next door you you were you made a comment about the landscaping on that, that piece. they have an existing canary island is that what is that what they're just putting in the in their small island in the front that's also? what they have in the island okay. as well yes. that's what i was hoping you were choosing is there with the flexibility of the hoot system uh being able to move the piping where where you have still have some space at the side is there a way you could create enough around the base of that palm to put some smaller or some additional landscaping that's in the three to four to five foot high scale like the island that's there now we do we do i believe we could make that um, what I what I wouldn't want to do is is make it too dense in just such a compact area where it may look a little odd to where we have this buildup in one little pocket and then we have 
you know, we step down the lawn area. Um, but I think we could probably work in some accent material, maybe bromeliads or something well, like that's that. That's very low. Well, there's bromeliads. So it gets to be about three, three feet tall. Um, I just don't want that one little pocket. Well, I'm, I'm trying point. to get you to make the pocket bigger. Uh, let, me, let me refer to my point here real quick. Give me one second. I mean, the mapping of the, the house that's there now is mitigated by that whole island out front, and we're replacing that entire island with one tree. Well, let's keep in mind also that the massing of the house also has, uh, we've got three coconut palms off to the side. We've got another coconut palm in the front, and they're curving towards the front of the house. Uh, we have a, a, a four stem Christmas palm in front. Um, but I, I think what we could do is probably extend the system further this way in this pocket here, which would allow us to gain more unobstructable area and clear. And then we can do some accent plant material in there that would maybe be in the four foot range. Sure. But I'm not talking bromeliads, I'm talking tree. we, trees. Some or like a hedge or well, yeah, something mm -hmm. more than you know. Yeah, we could do some Queen Emma crinum lilies, which get to be five, six feet tall. And we can do a pocket of massing right in here. That's something a little bit beefier, absolutely. That's that's got a, a long lifetime. It's not just the two or three year. Absolutely, I try to gear all my landscape plants towards plant uh, plant material that that's going to last. I don't like to put anything that's that's two years. It's just a waste for the homeowner. So yeah, we we could certainly do. I, I think crown and lilies would be a nice fit there. Um, you know, the queen emma has that nice burgundy kind of leaf to it, and if we add a mass and a cluster there, you'll have a nice five to six foot mass of leafy texture in the front. Okay, Haley, you. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, the Canary Island palm has a very distinct trunk. I don't think you really want to cover it up too much. I agree. <clears throat> um, but a good suggestion, so. Okay, any other comments on the landscaping? Or I'd like to entertain a motion. I'll make a motion based on the competent, substantial evidence and testimony presented. I move to approve the development plan uh, at the project located at 95 Island Drive South uh, and conditioned upon uh, the increased landscaping as described by the landscape architect. Thank you. Planting in the easement. Um, plantings in the easement that we David requested to leave okay. that those will be so removed. amended. Um, where we're still going to require the removal of the plants, is that correct? Based on what's set in the engineering document. It's unfortunate. But yeah, um, good idea. Yeah. Looking for a second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on. Keep it moving here. Um, another quasi judicial hearing or Number 21, Ocean Avenue. The applicants are here. Has anybody had any ex parte? No. No. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. No. Um, will anyone wishing to speak on this item please stand and raise your right hand? Do you affirm or do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. When you come forward, please state your name and address clearly for the record and whether or not you have been sworn in. And please speak directly into the microphone. Thank you. Austin Bernstein, 21 Ocean Avenue. Um, we, uh, we went back to the drawing board and we really spent a lot of time addressing primarily the front elevation and then the, the east and west elevation. So on the front elevation, the core issue that you guys 
addressed was the amount of fenestration in the front. And while we find that the fenestration is a key concept of the design, we were able to decrease it by 20%. So what we did is we removed the entire bottom row of windows and replaced it with stucco. And in front of that, we put a four foot landscape hedge. And then the top row of windows, all along the top, one of the board members had mentioned putting uh, shutters, which we installed custom shutters that matched the wood cladding. And then if you go to the next drawing, it's a little bit, these are much lighter renderings, but what we did here is the first thing that was brought up is that we had this punch card pattern of these small tab sized windows, which bothered a few of the, the members. We've removed all of those. And what we did instead is we switched from casement windows to three panel sliding glass windows, which are much larger. We put about approximately 40% wood cladding, the same color wood that's on the front of the house. Um, we put a living wall, which will be an herb garden for the kitchen of the house on both sides of the property. And we increased, I know the board has addressed with a few properties, casement windows, uh, I mean, clear story windows along the, um, along the ceiling line of each floor. And we increased those heights by about 50%. Um, and we think that those things combined with two faux columns and two faux beams that when viewed on an angle will provide a little bit of a pause that it really broke up the, the stark structure that you can see. Um, we did another test um, of the drive up on the approach to the community and we're very confident that the significant streetscape um, of landscaping will really obscure the view of the house. And on the neighboring side, if you scroll down, oh, up oh, just a little bit, up, down just a little bit. Okay, there you <laughs> okay, go. Um, uh, on this one, as you can see, we the living wall, we added a new window into the Eden kitchen area, which is um, on the first floor height. That's another clear story window. And then the two chiclet windows, the casement windows was replaced with a three panel sliding glass window. Um, and then we added that decorative column and beam. And I would strive to say that we really stressed to hit basically the maximum allowed change that we could at the property line, which is 25 square feet, that if we were to do more than that, it would break the code. So we went, as far as we could in terms of providing a change without completely redesigning the interior of the home. Um, so we're excited to hear your comments and suggestions. And Okay, thank you. Uh, comments from staff? No problem. No exception from the building. Engineering? Uh, any public comments? Okay, hearing none. Turn it over to the commission for discussion. I have none. I have none either. I think you guys did a nice job. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you've responded. Um, I think the West elevation is much improved. However, I'd like to see you. Uh, or suggest that you enhance that with some landscaping as well, some vertical elements. Um, it's, it is improved, but I still think you're going to be highly visible. Okay. Just my opinion. And I definitely appreciate the reduction in the fenestration. Okay, with that, any, would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Based on the competent, substantial evidence and testimony presented, I move approval of the development plan for the project located at 21 Ocean Avenue uh, with the following conditions that the west elevation uh, have an increase in vertical landscaping to soften the west elevation. Okay. 
I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Okay, moving on. Another quasi judicial hearing for project at 82 Island Drive. That's Island Drive South, right? Yes. Yeah. That's it. Do we need to correct that? Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, it's just a typo. We only have 82 Island Drive South, but yes. Okay. Good morning. Yeah. Hold on. Call for any ex parte. Oh, any ex parte. Also, because these are new items, I think it's best to have the staff do its report first. That kind of sets the stage. And then you can have the applicant come. The reason we didn't do it on the last two is because there was a continuation from the last year. Okay. Um, we'll entertain staff comments. After ex parte, ex parte, and then after review. Ex parte. <laughs> Any ex parte? No. No. We need a menu. No. no. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Will anyone wishing to speak on this item please stand and raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? When you come forward, please state your name and address freely for the record and whether or not you've been tuned in, and please speak directly to the mic. Okay, staff. Chairman Corey of Warren Town Planner uh, has no additional comments on, on this application. Does it meet all the zoning codes? Yes. Yeah, so Morning again, Durani Guy from the Bush Illinois Exception Division. Engineer. Tara, do you have any Instagram? Okay. Okay, thank you. Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Can we pull up the product? Is it possible? Yeah. Can you scroll down to the existing survey? Further down. And I think it's a little further. There you go. Right there. Good morning. Uh, my name is Richard Bremer. I'm with uh, RWB Linares Architecture, 1600 <clears throat> South Dixie Highway, Suite 400, Boca Raton, Florida. First of all, I'd like to wish everybody happy holidays. Um, I am here to review 82 Island Drive, Eric and Leslie Nussbaum residence for Varga Homes. Um, <clears throat> the new house. Um, that will be replacing an existing three-bedroom, two-bath home, one story, about 3,100 square feet. The existing house lab sits at approximately 6.8 NAVD, and the Crown of Road is 4.39. The new proposed five-bedroom, five-bath house, finished floor, will now be at 10-foot NAVD because of the uh, new FEMA flood map requirements. The garage portion of this new home will be at 6.5 for a comfortable driveway slope. Can we go to the site plan, please? Which is scroll up towards the, the beginning. Okay, um, the new house sits on a lot size of 12,000 square feet. The new AC square footage is about 37.45 under air, and the total under roof is 46.42. Uh, the house meets all square footage requirements of FAR 36%, and 
and the lot coverage at 32 percent. The front setback is 25 foot, which the house um, sits at 25 foot eight. The side setbacks are at 25, I'm sorry, the side setbacks are 15 uh, feet and the rear is at uh, 25 feet. The overall height from finished floor is 25, seven and a half inches, which is below the required 36, uh, 36 feet. If we go to the, the front rendering, please. The style is a two-story coastal transitional home with a smooth stucco finish. The color is a Sherman Williams extra white. Uh, the multi-sloped roof uh, will have a Burrell dark charcoal gray flat roof tile. Um, there will be applied travertine uh, accent stone at the garage and front uh, entry locations. There will also be brackets um, at the corner eave locations. There will be a straight drive. Uh, with gray pavers uh, to the garage, and there'll be uh, gray pavers also a walk um, up to the front um, entry. The rear of the house, you go to the, uh, the rear. rear the rear of the house um, has a covered patio that opens up to a, a pool and spa and a pool deck area, which will have ivory uh, colored pavers with step downs to uh, the wood dock. Uh, this house design meets and needs the needs of the news bombs and also meets or exceeds the requirements of the Ocean Ridge building and zoning codes. This is a simple design and the architecture, the massing and the overall presentation with the design landscaping fits well along the streetscape of Island Drive. I'm gonna bring Louie up to discuss the, uh, the landscape. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is uh, Louis Blahos. I'm the landscape architect, logistic use for this project. Um, basically, <clears throat> we tried to keep it simple but meet and exceed the landscape code for our owner's request. Um, Basically, because the existing residents that they live in, uh, especially on the sides, they have drainage problems. And in this situation, trying to get the drainage from the rear patio, which the uh, FEMA and AVD elevation increased substantially to the front, um, requires a, you know, a shallow slope and also a lot of inlets and whatever that we can't plant any trees. That said, uh, for the front, we have a, a couple of uh, uh, hollies on either side of the driveway in the center uh, area between the garage and the entry. There's a large 14 foot uh, plus media palm. And on the right side, which is predominantly one, one story, um, there is a couple of uh, ligustrum trees, of course, understory, and then all the way to the right of the property line and between that and the septic tank, there's a couple of uh, Chinese fan pumps, which are existing and um, rare at their side that we're relocating in, in that area because there's not gonna be that much fill. Uh, in, in the rear, uh, well, on the north side, there's an existing five foot hedge and there's uh, on the neighbor's property and there's ample screening with uh, some fishtail palms and um, arecas. Um, on the south side is a uh, ficus hedge uh, with, with existing material, and uh, we are proposing to plant a uh, photocarpus hedge at four foot for starters uh, up against the, uh, the ficus because the ficus has gotten so big that the bottom of the hedge is leggy and uh, there's no privacy between the two residences. Uh, in the rear property line, uh, <clears throat> We have a sea grape hedge, which the owner is going to maintain at uh, six foot. Um, he's more about the privacy than he is about views to the water. Mm -hmm. And um, on, on, one, on the north side, we have a, a fusia tree, um, just to screen the adjacent private space. On the south side, where the spa is, we have a, another 
Adonidia palm is a central focal point. And the other focal point is towards the water, and that is a uh, Montgomery palm, a triple. Um, that said, any questions? Anybody? Public comments? Public comments? Uh, okay. Yeah. Anybody have another Okay, back to the commission. Um, any comments? I have a couple questions. Sure, go ahead. Um, on the site landscape plan, uh, on three sides, there's a dark line, including at the back. Is that a uh, retaining wall? Yes. And what's the height of the retaining wall on the neighbor's <clears throat> side? Well, how, how much differential will there be uh, to the neighbors on? Well, the, the neighbor is at at one at one point in the back, which is the highest point. We're at uh, six point five feet, and the neighbor on the adjacent pri property is five point one. So, I would say fourteen to eighteen inches. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's the maximum point because then, as we get into the front, uh, where the wall is, the neighbor is at five point seven, and we're at six foot. So we're really just looking at a few inches there, uh, four inches. Thank you. And the, um, I'm not familiar with a lot of the planting material. So one of the questions I'm interested in is, is there a canopy tree in the front of the building, in the, the front or is these, is these uh, palms? Uh, no, there's only one palm and that's between the stairs and the garage, quad like a nice specimen. And on either side of the garage are hollies which are canopy trees. And uh, also on the other side, we have two uh, ligustrum trees, which are small canopy trees. Uh, I just want you to understand that the only area that's that's two story on this side is just the hatched area in, in the background. And uh, that is approximately about 45 feet plus away from the uh, front of the yard. Thank you. Okay. Um... Yeah, the question on trees, is it possible, um, you seem to uh, on the southeast point, um, is it possible to get another tree there? I mean, you're, you mentioned privacy, um, you're looking across the canal or the river as it's called, you know, it's very open to the club. Right. Well, the hazard that we're proposing, which is a C grade, is six foot pardon me. Is it six feet? Well, it's going to be um, four foot upon installation, and it will be maintained at six to seven feet. Yeah, I'm just okay. It just seems you could have a really nice tree there. Well, we could put another tree. It wouldn't be anything big. I, I would recommend maybe another Clusia. Um, you know, it doesn't drop leaves because it is close to the pool. So we don't want anything that's going to shed and create more of a maintenance problem. But if that's the case, sure. Let me, um, it's just a suggestion. Um, there's a, quite a drop from the finished floor to the grade on both sides of the house. It's like a two foot drop. My. Yes. How is that being addressed? Is that an extended footing or? Well, it's it's addressed by the um, uh, by the retaining wall that's going all the way back. And then also, if you look when when you go out the the uh, into the covered patio, that's at nine and a half. And then there's three steps to the right, and then three no, steps. I, I, I understand all that. Sorry. I'm just saying that at the edge of where the foundation of the building is, we have actually a two foot, two and a half foot difference. I would, I would presume, uh, I didn't design architect, but I would presume that there would be a stem wall okay. from the building to the grave. So it's going to extend the vertical height. Okay. Sure. Well, I'll let the builder in for the architect. You got to do it. Yeah, man. Just if, speak it. Just right. Say your name. We know who you are, Stephen. Come on. <laughs> All right. Steve. 
parking home. And what we're doing is because we have the piling system on the house, uh, instead of just a 24 inch grade beam, we're going to end up some places 42, 48 to take care of the grade there on the perimeter of the home okay. to try to fix up because nothing you can do when since the FEMA changed the regulations, there's not much more, you know, so we'll just have to pour that out. Yeah, it just seems unusual to have that much. Yeah. But instead of putting mm -hmm. huge retaining walls and everything else, that's how, you know, the owner and us wanted to address it all. They didn't yeah. want to be too hot with all the neighbors. So. Yeah, but say it seem more economical to just increase the grade. Yeah, but putting higher retaining walls on the sides and things like that. It works out good for them. They're happy with it. All right. Um, um, any other comments? comments? Yeah. Uh, landscaping at the front. Um, between the driveway, the walkway, and the way you've done the septic, you basically created a green desert. I, I just, for, forever, all we're going to see is the face of that house on the street. That's not the neighborhood. Well, as far as the desert, the majority of the front of the house is a septic tank, which obviously we can't. But the septic can be moved. You've chosen to put it there. I didn't choose to put it there. So, somebody has. Yeah. That's the drawing I'm looking at. I think what uh, has been, you know, you can realign the septic grain fields. Well, as I'm looking at it right now, we're, we're five foot from the property line on both the south and, and west side, which basically gives us more room up against the house and the front to add landscaping if that's what you, you would you like to You put a see. pad at the side of the driveway. Okay. That could be drain field. It's not hard to solve. You've just chosen not to solve it. I think, yeah, we have to just, we can't tell them how this. I'm not, okay. I, I I'm just, just telling, I'm just telling you. It's, I'd rather say that, um, I said, Neil, I understand exactly what you said. The drain field can be realigned to create some more planting area for a tree in that south. You're precluding this owner or anyone else from ever planting in that area. Which area I can't are we talking about? I can't which, tell which you. Which area are we talking about here? Can I finish, please? Yes. I can't tell you to plant in that area, but you're, I can tell you that it's wrong to stop someone from ever being able to plant in that area. You're, you're making any change for the, for the future prohibitively expensive for someone. And it doesn't need to be that way. I think what we should do, Neil, is we can make a suggestion and can be a condition that they revisit, you know, the alignment of the grain field to allow for, I think the concern from where I stand is to get more shade trees along. Absolutely. Along the road. Absolutely. The road. I mean, you're, you're, taking, you're taking down, I don't know the name of it, you're taking down one of the most beautiful trees on that street. It's on the, if you look at the original, uh, it, it looks like a Hawaiian. It's a Frangipani. Blue. Frangipani. Okay, I didn't know the name. Yeah, it's a Frangipani. Um, or it, it, it is, and. Um, well, I, I, I just said it. Most, when it blooms, it's, it's, it's the most beautiful. I, I agree. Tree. I agree. And, and I, you know, I would like to either relocate some of those or even keep them for that matter, but because of how we need to raise the elevation, it prohibits us because you got to move them one time. If you have to move them twice, you know, then they're gone. Um, some palms you can because of their fibrous roots and so forth. Right. Um, but going back to what you were saying, I, number one, I didn't design the drain field. Okay. This is what was given to me. Uh, number two, I'm assuming that that's the size that's required for the residents. Okay, I'm not, I'm not arguing that. So, no, so I'm that. trying to find out right now is 
if you put a condition, are we talking about relocating the tank, the drain field? Um, the idea, excuse me, if I could, because we can move this along. The drain field design is done by an engineer and then just take what seems to be the optimum location. But I'd like to bring Mr. Barger up to the, and see if he, I think he'll understand what I'm gonna suggest. Mr. Neal, again, if if you would like to add more height closer Excuse to the me. building. Sorry. Let me just, if I could have Mr. Barger, I think we can. Yeah, you got a stone. Let's see. Um, you're familiar with what yeah. Neil is so, referring to. Yeah. No, I think, let me, if I could, just a suggestion. Okay. Obviously, the commission has some reservation about the exposure yeah. that you're presenting on the street. Yeah. So if you could uh, get with Envira Design or whoever did this yeah, Envira. Yeah. Uh, and have them accommodate the required drainage system, but allow for this gentleman, your landscape architect, to be able to address the concerns of the commission, which is to try to get some more uh, mature material. Right, right there at the center part, right there, or, yeah. I guess. I think it's off. a reasonable suggestion yeah, and request. I'll see what we can do within the limits. I have no problem with within the limits of the health department and everything else, because, you know, they get tricky. So whatever no, we they, do, they, we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No problem. Okay, thank you. Neil, are you? Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, if that concludes your presentation, I'll just open it for okay. discussion in the previous motion. Thank you. Um, any commissioners have any comments? Yeah, I like to look at the place. Um, I don't have the same heartburn that uh, Neil has over the fact that you can see the house. Uh, maybe a larger tree would be nice, but I also like to see homes when I drive by them. And, and too often, I think they're hidden by uh, landscaping. Now that's a preference, but I think uh, I think the presentation was good, and I like the look of the house. Okay, Jim. Mm -hmm. yeah. Neil, you stated what your concerns have been. So, pardon? pardon? You've stated your concerns, so I think we're. I have, and. Um... The house, the house is satisfactory. I'm not, I'm not commenting on the, on what I'm seeing. I'm just commenting on the use of the lot. Rick, I'm good with the comments made by others. Yeah, I think, um, I think the house is well done. I'm not a fan of the travertine cladding, but I'll just go over it. That I think it's inappropriate material for facade or veneer. Um, but all in all, I think it's a well done project. So um, I'll entertain a motion. Rick has, has the, the uh, nomenclature down for doing this. So I'm, I'm assuming we're going to say, let's go and <clears throat> the possibility of looking at yeah. some movement in the septic field. Thank you. Spin it again, Rick. Right? <laughs> uh, based on the competent, substantial evidence and testimony presented, I move to approve the development plan of the project located at 82 Island Drive South with the condition that the engineering drawings be revised uh, to relocate uh, substantial portions of the uh, drain field to allow for revision in the landscape architecture uh, to soften the front street elevation with landscaping. Sure. Could we just say substantial is a lot. Could we just say practical instead of substantial? We'll leave it to the staff to make judgments on this. I think we're to give guidance to the staff. I'm just worried about those. I'm just worried about those, what we can do because you know they got all the setbacks. Okay. Yeah. So whatever we possibly can do, we will do. Staff or understanding of the direction. Yeah. Okay. All right. With that, uh, second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to 18 Hershey Drive. That, um, am I getting this right now? Is that coming through? It's parte. Oh, it's <laughs> Too early. Uh, any ex parte? None. None. No. Is that what we have people for? Because that's what I'm gathering from staff is that they're more reactionary than um, this instance. So we'll let you know. Okay. None. Uh, none is for me. And will anyone wishing to speak on this item please stand and raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? When you come forward, please state your name and address clearly for the record on whether or not you've been sworn in, and please speak directly into the microphone. Good morning and happy holidays. Scott Coriel, I'm the uh, owner, agent, and project manager for this, this particular project. Uh, also with me is John Riskus, general contractor, and uh, from Yates Associates Architecture is uh, Jim Mobley. Both, both may or may not be speaking, depending upon the questions. So. Um, at a very high level, this is a uh, 200 square foot addition. We are, sorry, is that better? Okay. This is the 200 square foot addition, uh, an enclosure of an existing porch uh, to expand the living space. This is a very, it's an 1800 square foot home. We're simply expanding the living room to include the uh, porch enclosure. And we're adding one bathroom. It's currently a three bedroom two bath and we're making it a three bedroom, three bath. It has a abnormally large bathroom today that we're splitting into two bathrooms. So that's at a very high level. Um, we have the uh, rendering uh, from the uh, front elevation. While she's teeing that up, I will tell you that uh, additionally, um, new, all new windows will be added, hurricane impact, of course, uh, meeting code. Uh, windows will be added, replaced, and a new, instead of a single front door, it will be a double door. Um, that's the front elevation that we're looking at currently, metal roof, windows, and doors. Um, let's see if there's anything else here. Again, it was 1,801 foot, increased to uh, 2020. 2,000 square feet, a little over 2,000 square feet. Um, it's pretty straightforward, <laughs> the uh, the project. Um, glad to answer any questions. You have a whole deck in front of you, but go. Um, I have a question. I see that it's a LLC ownership with an out-of-state owner. Yes. Uh, can you describe the intention for this property? Is it being Redeveloped it, it's for resale, is it being re redeveloped for, for rental, rental property? For rental, for rental property. He, he has not determined uh, at this time the the long-term longevity uh, of the project, I mean, of the use, but uh, initially it's probably going to be for rent. For resale. For, for rent. Rental. For rental. For okay. rental. Right. And, and the reason we're interested in that, of course, is as you add uh, more restrooms and you have a rental property. Um, I have one that's under rental right next door to me. The number of vehicles seem to increase when these properties are in rental. Uh, and um, I want to make sure that we have, uh, that it's a very tight street, that we have sufficient off street parking here. And so maybe that's a question for the staff. Do we, well, are I, we comfortable with the yeah. uh, availability of parking here? Um, Mr. Chairman, Town Planner, uh, 41, and the uh, project does meet code for parking. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question really quickly? Sure. Is the owner aware that um, we have a sh we don't allow short term rentals in this home? Yes, ma'am. want to make sure. Yes, that absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chair. Uh, staff, any other comments? No. No other. Oh, no, no exception by the building official. Thank you, guys. Um, there is no drainage plan, so. Oh, that's nice. So, so I've been in touch with uh, Enviro Design. You mentioned them earlier today. We're just awaiting. We're. I have the review by uh, 
Chair, and um, item number, let's see, she's down here on item number, the drainage is uh, four, I think, and we are absolutely, we'll work with staff on the drainage plan and, and make sure there is a, a, a new drainage plan for the, for the front driveway there. Totally agreeable. I'm just waiting on Enviro Design to provide it. Yeah, I forgot we have an Alpine chalet in town. <laughs> well, it, it, that that's the existing. We're not changing anything on the that that yeah. roof is there. So yeah, we're trying understand. to we're trying to make it as pretty as we can. I forgot totally about it. 1981 um, architecture. I think uh, what you're doing is upgrading, obviously, and updating. The concern I have is, which doesn't exist now, that with that really substantial roof area, um, how you're going to address drainage, you know, by gutters and distribution, I think staff are going to have to really look at that. Because we, we will work with staff on any drainage issues up there. And, and, and it's a massive roof area. Um, I think the materials are fine. Um, I, 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 I noticed that driveway on the side from the, would be the west side, I guess, is added, that's new. Or no, that, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a pebble, it's a pebble drive and there is a septic tank that sits back behind, let me get to that. Uh, no, I see it, yeah, I've seen it. It's yeah, it, it, it's a pebble. Well, I, I'm just responding to Commissioner Carey's, oh, okay. Carey's comment that, you know, this is a situation where there's no garage, obviously. Yeah. Um, and it appears that there's a fair amount of off street parking. <laughs> yes. you, you can fit three, 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 almost uh, three, three, four cars with that double drive. It's four cars easily in this driveway. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Um, the landscaping is really. There's, there's not much on it. Looks like some coconut trees and some foundation planting. It, it mostly the existing landscaping is staying and um, we will surely add anything that's needed, but uh, we're just trying to, you know, beautify the front to give it a nice in keeping uh, architecture and, and landscape elements, but I don't think there's anything exotic that is being proposed. Could we ask for, but again, it is a rental. Is there any way, um, and we may suggest it as a condition to look at upgrading the streetscape, landscaping, maybe some hedging in that island to- Sure. Sure. The, yeah, a little bit of we have Calusa there now. This this rendering, but it would there is Calusa there. Um, uh, Calusa, it, Calusa Hedge existing. Um, is that going to remain? Yes. Well, it's it, there's a photograph. Um, I think the whole landscaping has to be revamped. I mean, it looks a bit tired at the moment. Well, there you, you see, um, there, we are going to add some things to it if, on uh, the landscape plan. Do you have a copy of that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm glad to take any comments and address them as a condition. We're absolutely in agreement. I mean, we're personally big fans landscaping. So I think it's going to help not only your use, but right. the neighborhood as a whole. Right. And it's it's a, one of our unique streets so there's a lot of charm and Love eclectic it. nature that here is so okay um but I, I would suggest that you know we create some kind of buffer between the drive hershey drive and the circular driveway okay just to absolutely we'll take that as a condition i don't know if the rest of the commission are in agreement okay. yep. all right Apart from that, yeah, it's a good upgrade. Yeah. Mr. Chair, the buffer that you're asking for, you want a tree buffer or a hedge buffer? Well, it's, it's, a, little... it's really a hedge buffer to on the right away. Okay. Partly because if it becomes rental and you know, there's a lot of 
vehicles of various types, vehicles and formulae. <laughs> so, Rick, you want to? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to open it up for public comment? Any public comment? I don't see many public left here unless the chief has a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, please. The general contractors you want to come? You know, come to the board. I have to state your name. My name is John Riskus, Riskus Construction. We've been uh, doing this permit procedure now for about six months. The uh, demolition permit alone was 103 pages of application to get through it, which we have. Will you give us a conditional permit to get started with construction? <laughs> Subject to landscaping approval. Just want to comment. Yeah, this is just development plan review. Once you they approve, then you go for the permit. They they are not allowing you to start construction. That's the building official that signs off on that. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. I'll make a motion based on the competent, substantial evidence and testimony presented. I move that the development plan for this project, located at 18 Hershey Drive. Be approved with the following condition that a landscape hedge buffer be added along Hershey Drive. I thought that the, um, you said that for the drainage plan yeah, to be drainage. provided and, and drainage for the, and drainage the and the approval plan. of the drainage plan and all necessary additional plans for the uh, town. Okay. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you all day. Okay. Um, Tracy, I may need some assistance with the other items on the agenda here. Let's have to, to introduce each one of these. Yeah, you just want to call the next item. Okay, the next item is regarding development plan review checklist, <laughs> which I think everybody was given their copy. Carla, do you want to start with the discussion? I know we'll add something to it. Uh, so, yes, we have updated the checklist. We made additional changes after we met with member Chair Marsh. So what we try to do is just reduce the items submitted by a little bit, just reduce the paperwork that the applicant will have submitted. Um, and as you see, the items that we change are highlighted in either yellow or green. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you just... all see the new checklist that was placed on the diet this morning? <laughs> just <a minute. laughs> Yeah. If yeah. I added a whole section here, um, they had on our conversations, I added a whole section as um, if you're looking at it, it, it says page 12 on the bottom there. Um, we've added a section for the applicant to address how each element of the code section 62-56 is met by providing a narrative with the application they also need to confirm which type of architectural style that they will be submitting so it's going to be upon them to give you a narrative of their project and how it meets okay. is this revised one now and alone we don't need this old Correct. Correct. yes yeah, so from now moving forward um even though the application is going to be required they're only going to be giving me the original copy for you you all will just be there <laughs> application of all those pages. No, I'm just talking about this old document that came in the yeah, package. That's, 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 that's that. Throw that away. Mm -hmm. Discard that. Okay. Discard that. All right. So yeah. I haven't digested the new one yet. So just okay, in, so, oops, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, the new one, Neil, is that page that you're holding there in your right hand. You missed the that's change. the new that's one that starts with page 10. Yeah. Yes, actually in your packet on page three. Yeah, the only change that we added from what you guys received to now is adding that one page, like that, that narrative, that they will have to just go by what the code states and just answer every single um, of how their, their building is, accommodates the neighborhood of their architectural design and so forth. 
what we've done is we've just taken the town code section 6356 and we've dropped it in this application so that they can actually see what the code says and then give you a narrative as to how they're meeting that and we think that will make everything go a little bit smoother for you here on the dais yeah we meant to i think the whole commission was in agreement that to get some of these packages that are just cumbersome a lot of redundant information for our, our review that we kind of tailor it and trim it down um, to something that's what I call design development rather than construction documents. Because we don't need to get that deep into the process. It's also a, a relief for the, the applicants so that they're not committing to all these other consultant agencies. Um, Let me ask clarification because I wasn't sure in looking at this. Is it just that we're getting a smaller portion of what's submitted to the town? Or is the applicant no. getting more streamlined in what the applicant has to submit before he gets approval from us? Um, in a sense, it is going to, certain things are still gonna be required. For example, the application, you just, you all will see it so they won't have to pay as much for copies. Um, we're still gonna require them to submit drainage plans. Um, it just, you guys won't get all the copies. Care will review it. So there still will be that review process and you all will get the memo of whatever Terra writes if there's any issues with drainage or anything or so forth. But we're just reducing how much we're requiring them and how many copies, because I know that's what's one of their issues is how many copies they have to make. Um, so that was one of the big things. We did take a little bit of other documents away completely, um, but majority is still will be, I mean, they will still have to submit a, a couple of things. It's just, we're reducing the amount of everything they have to submit. This part, part of this came out of our workshop uh, and comments of, uh, uh, Steve Varga, mm -hmm. uh, and I wish he would have stayed for that. I, <laughs> I thought that's trying to did. kind of look at that way earlier. Yeah, you know, right. because I, I mean, I really would like to get that kind of. Uh, we, we want what we need to make the design review decisions here, but to make it as efficient and and uh, least costly to the applicant to get past this point. Um, even if that means then at this point, then they have to go back and complete the work in order to pull their permits and things. I mean, that's my view on it. Uh, it may not be, be practical, but it still seems like to me, all we're doing is streamlining the portion of this big package that comes to us for our convenience, but it's not making it any better for the applicant. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with that. Um, yeah, I, 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 sorry, Tracy, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. We're really kind of, and I deal with this monthly myself. Most municipalities have what we're suggesting as a setup. So you don't have, you know, <clears throat> because it's unfair, and we, we've seen it over the last few months, that people come in here with completed drawings. We're then reviewing it. If we have some problems, they're stuck because they've committed, you know, they've, they've drilled down really deep to their construction documents and it's you know one comment can affect mm -hmm. three different types of of consultant input so if we get a reduced um, with the intent which is a key word of what they're trying to do it may not have all the technical aspects of what we've been seeing but it's it you'll see the the um, type of architecture the renderings floor plans, landscape plans. Those are our main concerns at this level of review. And I think if we can get that, you know, fine tune, it's gonna take a little bit of, you know, shakedown to, to get it to where we are comfortable, staff are comfortable, and more importantly, applicants, you know, comfortable. But I just think these again, and, and you see one of the things I do want to suggest that we add um in the package is what i call previously approved and current approval um, we did actually ask. yeah i know i asked you to do it but I, you know this would have been a, these two the first two on the agenda this morning because it's not easy for everybody that's not trained to see what the changes are but if you do an over and under it can be in black and white it doesn't have to be colored 
just so you can see the differences and how they've responded. Yeah, it so, would be. so moving forward, is it approved? That would be one of the requirements is that they're yeah, going to have- Does everybody to... understand that? Yeah, it's a good idea. I understand that and I understand what you described, but I'm not sure that what I heard from Tracy, that the process matches what you described. It, right. it seems like to me that they're still getting in deep into the drawings mm -hmm. in order to get it to the town. And then the town takes uh, yeah, so uh, and, and calls that down to a smaller set for us. But, right. but if we make a comment and send them back, they're back to the same place of bringing multiple engineers. I want to get them I want to make it less expensive for them to get before us so that if we ask for something, they don't just keep seeing dollar signs. They say, oh, that's a good suggestion. We'll, we'll make that change. Right. So really what I think you want to get back to is when we first started this, you had a concept plan. That was it. You just had the concept plan. It showed you the outside of the building. Um, it showed you a floor plan. And that was it. We didn't have all the construction documents, the engineering. It didn't have any of that. So we're creating a hybrid here, I think. And I think to your concern, a lot of what Tracy's is really written verbiage to you know describe the style, you know, your coverages, all the, the criteria which are then going to go to Durani and you know for compliance review. But what we're here really to do is to look at the aesthetic um, aspect of what is submitted. Yeah. We just don't need to get technical. I mean, we can keep it the way it is, but I, I really think it's it's creating some, you know, from an applicant's standpoint, it's an unnecessary expense. It's a commitment much too early in their process of development. Well, to reinforce what, what Rick is saying, don't we have to have the applicant and the building department decide at what point you can extract the piece that we need. They may still be working on all this other stuff. So right now, it's as Rick is saying, they're going all the way to the end point and then they're pulling out the pieces we need. No, that's that's no. not what we want to do. I can tell you as an applicant, I, I, I want to know there's an issue very early along. Right. Okay. And actually, what you're getting now is you're getting the complete documents that they would need for a building permit. No, right. no, it's not. No, it's not. No. So we clarify well, even, almost. Almost is we, we do not, and we clarify this because I know some people do include it into their, their application, and that's not the case. We do not need demolition, mechanical, electrical plans, or any other plans that are building. And that's why Guy specifically instructs in his review that, you know. That's he doesn't awesome. have any exceptions, but he will do a complete review during the building permit stage. This is not the building permit stage. So we try to, not, sometimes they do submit that just because they want to be extra, but we're trying to very much in this application specify, we do not need those um, at this stage, because this is not the stage to, for us to be looking at electrical, mechanical, or plumbing, or any of that stuff. So we did clarify that because I know some applicants do just want to do everything at this stage and it's that's not the, that's not the case yeah i think the burden is going to be on staff initially because that's the receipt of an application mm -hmm. so i think staff needs to direct the applicant as to what the requirements are for this review yeah i think and it's here too it does say here in yellow if you look at the second bullet here on the first page do not include demolition mechanical electrical plumbing plans or any other plans not listed yeah, but that's again, uh, unfortunately, I'm in this business. <laughs> uh, you don't want to get technical. You know, you, you don't need to have all the technical information, the sections of the building, that kind of thing. So th there are a number of components. I mean, I think it's, as I said, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve here, how we get it. But I hope that the rest of the commission are in agreement that we don't need to have these voluminous packages. I agree with that, but, but my goal also, and I think it was a stated goal in the workshop, was to streamline the process right. and the cost for the applicant. Yeah. Uh, and you, um, we got to make all, sure we got to make sure that that's, uh, you know, th well, this looks like still a pretty substantial checklist for the applicant. Um, uh, and I, uh, it's 
It's really not. I mean, it's a lot of verbiage here, obviously, but I said, that, you know, it's tick the boxes, whatever you need to do. Can, can yeah. I ask you a question, Mark? Is, is this typical of what you'd see in Gulf Stream? Now, yeah, but, I mean, this this is still, I mean, I agree with Rick to a point. This, some of this is still a little bit verbose and you know, lengthy. Um, the application, in, in my experience, coming to this commission, should be five pages at the most, five to seven pages. That's, that's what the normal package would be. Um, you know, we're, we've added, and let me remind everybody, we've added streetscape, which I think is critical. Um, we've added, what was the other one we added? There was another. Well, photographs, again. I mean, we all go, I think, to the sites and review that, but again, for the record, for illustration, if we have a problem. Mm -hmm. This guide, this guidance uh, that we have to review this checklist, I, I obviously, you saw my concerns during this last meeting. I, I, I don't see how we can do a site plan, uh, landscape plan that doesn't include septic. It's it's a well, no, it's no, a drive it right here. here. It's talking about elimination. So no, um, I think that's a good catch. You have to have it the area resident reserved for a system. Absolutely. So how they get it in, like we got into this morning, is not our Correct. Uh, you know, we're just business. we're just telling them that there's a box. They still have to design. Yeah, they, they have to designate an area that's going to be dedicated to their system. Now, another concern that I think is coming up, I think the two two houses today didn't have a significant height lot height differential to the adjoining properties, but some of them where we're going to have the ten feet are going to be next to other properties that have never been raised once before in the past and i'm concerned that when i get a package i'm pouring over these things looking for spot elevations on the, on the thing rather than more of an overview that's just maybe whether it's a verbal description or at some point i would like to see a profile sectional say drawn at the 20 at the setback line at the front of the building to see what that profile looks across or I think, or I think that, the, that's part of the going to be part of the requirements again good yes yeah. now is that something we should see at this stage because that that oh, way absolutely because okay. that has serious impact cost that's what i think i mean i mean this this one house today had quite a bit of freeboard that you commented on um uh, some of them are going to have 16. right and how do we terrace it down exactly yeah so again that will come out because they have to they'll have a survey obviously right existing survey they'll have floor plans which will have elevations on right them. they'll have elevations of the building design but, but in terms of in, in terms of uh of blending into into the uh, you know into their neighbors I, I think that's something that they're going to want input on at this early stage. I don't think they're going to want want to be waiting until. Well, I think we we will make comments to that, but and then they have to address that when they come in. But that means they're coming back a second time. What I'm saying you know, is, how do we get that information the first time? You know, then it's staff. Then it goes to staff to review that compliance. And, and just for the record, I know that guy usually does ask them to have sectional for the building permit stage to show how they're re draining the water, the drainage at the end of the property. And I'll let him comment more on that. Well, this this isn't only a drainage issue. It's it's it looks it's how it looks. You know whether whether they're doing it all at once, whether they're staging uh, small walls or or what they're doing. It doesn't necessarily mean it's only there for drainage. I have to um, compliment um, board member Kiri that your, I mean, um, proposals as stated are very clear. So it's inevitable that once building plans are submitted, there will be changes. 
things are going to shift. Okay. Um, and usually by making, um, you know, conditions, it ties them into doing exactly what the board has approved. So even though we might shift something five or 10 feet to the left or to the right, they still have to put that tree in because that is a condition. So it might shift a little bit, but that is what I say. Um, you have been approved contingent on doing this according to the board. So even though you move things around, it has to be here. And generally they, they do comply. Make sure that they abide by what, you know, because the thing is, you're going to go back to PNZ if, if you know, if it's not done. So, you know, we need the last one. <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, I think it's going to take some give and take <clears throat> and review and re review. Yes. And I just, I, I'm just kind of saddened by this because, you know, then it comes into, you know, Pam's advice as to, <clears throat> you know, they're committed to this and, you know, you're becoming subjective and, you know, it, it, it leads into other. Aspects of the review. I didn't get an opportunity to meet with Neil. He's the only one that I did meet with <clears> to talk about um, some of the issues, which we will try to do after this meeting. But I think you're on the right track. One of the things that you want to do is to be as specific as you can in your motions. Um, as Dorani said, that ties them to it. But we don't want them coming back. Um, over small issues that could be resolved by staff with your word. So when you make a motion, a strong motion, they have to do it. Or you have to rely upon staff to make sure that it's done. We can also add something um, so that you feel secure in that, that after it's done, it comes back just as a, not as a, a motion item, but as just information for you so that you know it was done. Maybe that would make you feel more secure that they, Accomplish the things that you discussed at the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, well said. That's, I think. <clears throat> yeah, because our goal, I think, is to make it as you know cost effective for the homeowner as possible, trying to, you know, and time time effective and cost effective. And cost effective for staff yeah. too. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent for your six to eight sheets, five to seven sheets that, that we'd like to have. I'm, my clarification is, is that the same amount at that stage that the, that will be submitted to the town? For the building department. For, for the, the building, building department. Um, and then only after, after it passes our, we have a motion to approve, then they're, they go in and they spend more money to right. finish. Yeah. We don't want that to backtrack. Yeah. So I think we're, Somehow surrounding this wagon in various right. directions. Well, but I think this, yeah, I'm looking at this. It's not clear, clear as to when the information is required. One of the things that we discussed was moving this plan review up a little bit to prevent them from submitting everything in advance. Mm -hmm. So is that something that we want to address? Um, figuring out which items need to be done before they get here, and then after the project is approved. Do we then want to say now you have 30 days or 60 days to get the rest of the project components? I, I mean, yeah, once they, they have this checklist, it's just for development plan review. Once you go into the building permit stage, they have their own checklist to abide by. Right. So the building permit has a whole separate right now, checklist it's, that it's they have to submit. Meshed in or, that's what the problem is. Yeah. And the frustration is real from the yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what, really what would be then nicer is that the applicant can get before us faster. By the time they they make a commitment to that project and get to us, uh, you know, we want to make a, that uh, compact and, and efficient for the, think think of it if any of us were building a new home here and how, how uh, frustrating it would be that it drug on for months and months. I well, invite you all to come to one of my presentations. I have one other comment is I, I really uh, don't think adding uh, section 6356 to the checklist uh, is necessary. I think maybe referencing section 6356 in the checklist, but it feels like, you know, as I look at this, okay. it's going to be a huge part 
of what they see as the checklist, um, it feels a little uncomfortable to me. It, yeah, it's in the code. I, I agree. So just do, instead of adding all that, just say applicant shall provide a narrative that identifies. So just say that first sentence, yeah. right. plain and simple. Yeah. And, and you can reference uh, according to section 5356. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. I agree with that. So you're, you're, you just want the first sentence right here. Yep. Is that the rest of that is what our role is? <laughs> yeah. Um, don't list it, but we'll say provide a narrative um, that addresses the elements in section 62-56. Yeah. Short narrative. Yeah. Okay. Short narrative. Short narrative. <laughs> Brief. Brief narrative. I would just like to say for the record because I, I know that um, staff works. Um, I've been giving them like a really hard timeline. So when an application does come in within 24 to 48 hours, we review to see everything on the checklist is there or if it's too much, whatever the case. And then staff, I give them a week to pretty much review and come back with either comments or not. And if they do have comments, sometimes it's the applicant that holds up on how long they take to answer those comments. And that also extend the process. And then, you know, when they submit again, that that's also a part of the issue as well. Sometimes an applicant takes two to three weeks to respond to a comment. And then as soon as they respond, they're like, okay, I want to get done, you know, tomorrow. And that is also an issue because then staff needs to review. Once they give me the go ahead, then I see, okay, when is my notice guidelines? When can they go based on my notice guidelines? Good. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. So everybody happy? Well, happy with what? I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, so with, a, with the discussed format, yeah. new format. So I think it's a start. Good to Do we need to have a motion on this? Or? I would like I would like some sort of consensus or motion so that staff knows how to proceed. Okay, I'd like. Uh, oh my chair God, and Marsh, I just make some creative. Creative. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that'll depend on my right hand. <laughs> my wingman for the pilots that are here. That'd be you, Rick. Uh, <laughs> well, since it's among us, um, staff and commission, this should be easier. And uh, we'd like a, uh, uh, a finalization of a revised checklist. Uh, this is the motion uh, that. Uh, that includes what we have before us up to the end of the first line of page 12, uh, deleting the remainder of page 12. Um, any additions that need to be that? Okay. That's a great start. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Okay. Thank just have, you. We just have to try it out. No, good job, Trace. That's that's the thing. Carla. And Pam mm -hmm. and Carla and whoever. Okay. Um, next item. Let's start labeling number two. Is number seven the review of the water conservation, landscape, and irrigation uh, memorandum? I guess. Yes. This is being presented to us by the South Florida Water Management District to comply with their regulations. Um, we had um, Jennifer in the town attorney's office review everything, and she submitted a memo for you to review. It's two ordinances that they are tied together. Yeah, if you want to tie number seven and number eight together, we can do that for discussion. Can I just ask for curiosity? Where did I fall asleep in the wheel? You know, 10 years ago, whenever we had a water shortage, it was three days a week we left to water. And it's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, Sunday, I think. And what's, what's... It, it, yeah, I think it also varies on the two. Your address. Yeah. No, I mean it's it's an odd and even number. I know that, but I'm just saying. Yeah. On, on my, I've always been on a three day side. Yeah. Then. Now it's I think being changed to a two days. You're looking at two. Days. Yeah, I mean that's. I know this is what's changing. I didn't know what the 
Well, you're now going to get paid. They changed it from three to two a while ago. Right. And we never got caught up with our code. So now they're okay. Well, that, come to that us explains it. I mean, I need to revise. And they're, they're asking for consistency. Um, the reason that I had um, Jennifer from our office review this is because she reviewed and changed about half a dozen of these already. So she's in close contact with the South Florida Water Management District. They're trying to get the entire county to be on board with their process and then to provide for penalties in their code so that if somebody's violating the chief will be able to, um, to regulate and to ticket them appropriately. That's basically what they're asking. Well, I would suggest that this be broadcast pretty well to the citizens. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I thought I was in touch with those things, but I was yeah. tripped up by this one. Yeah, we're doing better now in communicating with the public. We're putting new ordinance sections um, in the newsletter on the website, getting the word out in town commission meetings, things like that. I have a question for the town attorney. Uh, so, are these revocable by the town commission if at some point? Sure, because we're we're delicate in it, especially in the uh, emergency plan and the shortage plan. We're we're taking action. We're allowing an action to be taken by a third party that affects uh, our code enforcement that has to be done uh, without action here at the town. They have, you know, they say there's water shortage and we have to go around and ticket. I said. That's it's a little uncomfortable that that's what it was last time right yeah. so um my other comment is uh that uh, how the process and possibly we could have the chief uh weigh in here on this um is uh that the violations first second third fourth violations and particularly how they happen with so many of our residents that are uh, not full-time residents here. Uh, so all you need is a power outage and your uh, sprinkler systems kicking in on the wrong day or the wrong hours. Uh, and uh, the, the homeowners in Michigan or Ohio, who, who wherever they- Who determined the penalties? Is yeah. that them or us? That was them. Them? Mm -hmm. Okay. But we we could uh, modify them, correct? Not in the ordinance. Well, it says in here you can be more restrictive but not less. Right. I mean, these are, you get up to 250 and $500 fines, they're pretty substantial. So, how, how, how do we manage that? You know, we've tended to be a town that uh, we go with courtesy first and working with our. Um, uh, working with our residents before we start slapping fines down. Well, and it still will. The first violation is a warning. Um, so, yeah. so how does that um, violation get delivered to the seasonal resident that's not there? So, in the past, um, enforcement of the South Florida Water Management District's declaration of a water emergency has been handled. Um, by a citation process like this, directed to the town by the water management district on a water management citation. So when I read this, uh, having not been aware of it until we got the package, um, I would tell you that um, it, it appears as if um, acceptance of this ordinance without further consideration may be burdensome on the town and its enforcement because if they wish to. Uh, the way I understand our current code to be written, if they wish to contest their second violation of $50, they will go to county court and it will require an attorney to be present. Um, wow. Our attorney, not the South Florida Water Management District's attorney. Um, we always handle code enforcement as code compliance in the beginning. So by that, what I mean is we try and educate people first. If the South Florida, if, in reading this, my understanding would be that if the South Florida Water Management District declares a drought or a water emergency, we will probably be very strict in enforcement of this particular ordinance on a first violation. And unfortunately, if your 
unable to rectify your sprinkler system uh, issues because you're out of town, you will likely receive um, that $250 fine very, very quickly, which will actually be 300 because you'll have gotten a 50 and then a 250. Um, I understand the necessity behind this from the, the drop perspective and, and, and South Florida water management. I just don't know if this is where the town would want to go um, because I believe there are some, and, and I would have to defer to the attorney, I believe there are some other avenues of enforcement through South Florida water management citation process that was enacted in the past that may better serve the town rather than having an independent ordinance. The other thing we're trying to address is the drainage problems that we have in the town and over watering the, helps I mean, with that problem. So it help with it after it. So. The, the, this, you, not overwatering it helps us a lot, but how we get there is, I think, we can have our own town ordinance without having to comply with a non town entity's set of um, violations and fines and penalties. Uh, and, and that may be something that you want to consider. I, I don't know. I would defer to the attorney. Well, I would have to talk to them. I would, I would talk to them. Um, I don't know if they can push back. Chief, that's my Compliance and penalties do not require an emergency. I, I understand. There are two ordinances here, both of which have penalties. severe, 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 and very specific compliance well, requirements and penalties. The first one is just normal use. The first ordinance. That's the two. That's the watering on the certain days and whatever. And What's the duration of anything? If you give me a warning this year and then you give me one next year, is that my second or my first? <laughs> uh, well, I would have to say that I'm going to use this term and people don't like it, but I would think that the officer or the um, staff member that's doing the enforcement of this would have to have some discretion to determine that. But I can tell you from my personal perspective as a law enforcement officer, if I tell you that you are in violation and I warn you on your first violation today and I come back tomorrow and the water is still going, that is a second violation. If taking into consideration what Mr. Carey said, there is a power outage in town, um, my discretion may kick in and I would probably likely say I'm aware that there was and I'm aware that these clocks are mechanical often and so they're off or they're um, electronic computerized that get out of sync and they they flash and if I ask you to fix it and you say oh my gosh here's what the problem is we would use some discretion and not issuing a citation right. I can't give you any more than I can tell you that you that, that that a police officer will always issue a citation for going six miles over the speed limit regardless of any conditions I can't tell you what the individual enforcement officer will take into consideration when they're doing this um, most of our the, the conditional violation uh, that we put out in our ordinances is often written like this and there is discretion so in the first ordinance that you have before you on a regular basis i think we would have to take that into consideration on a water emergency ordinance i think that those discretionary um, yeah, guidelines kind of change yeah, considerably um, and you saw it the last time, for all of you that live here, you saw it the last time we went through that full emergency and started issuing multiple citations to right. residents. And I think it's, I won't say what I want to say. It, it, is, a, it, is, it is a considerable change, in my opinion, from three days to two days, and I was not aware of that either, so I am in violation at home. I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing says about duration of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. No, no, no. I mean, how long your sprinklers can be set. Correct. I mean, you can run instead of 15 minutes cycle. You can go 30 minutes. <laughs> and I and I anticipate, and I anticipate based on personal experience that that's what will occur. And that there will be no water in between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. But at 4 o'clock, those that have lush landscape that want to maintain it, you will see a longer cycle to get. Right. Um, but you're aware, kind of four heels with one inch 
uh, of water on the ground so that it can percolate properly and feed the roots. We water twice right on the same day. day, one at the beginning of the period, <laughs> one at the end. And you may see that uh, depending upon what kind of plantings you have in town. I personally would favor the town setting its own ordinances yeah. rather than. I didn't know there was a room. problem with the three day. Hey. That's this was, maybe I haven't been listening well enough. The, the county or the water management district has one rule. Do they take precedence over anything we do? They, you know, that's, a, that's an excellent question. I think that if you have something different from them, that they can regulate, it would be incumbent for them to regulate, which means that they would have to send in their own people. Um, and and um, give you a violation. I don't believe that you can be less um, stringent than the South Florida Water Management District. They have priority over that. And that's why they were able to go to the city and, and say, you need to do this, you need to do that. And you have no choice as a city. You have as, a, to as a citizen, you have no choice. The city can say, we're hands off, we're not getting involved, it's not our issue. These are our rules, so our police officers won't be on duty. Our code enforcement officers won't be on duty. But that does not stop the South Florida Water Management District from sending in their own people. You can't, you can't force them to do what you want. I'm going to, to, to weigh in on that a little bit to your question, only because I look at this in a similar manner as I do a state law versus a city ordinance. The state certainly has the authority to right um enact laws that cover everyone and i believe that under rules and of administrative code that the water management has certain authority to do that over there i don't believe they have legislative authority to make laws but i believe that they under administrative code they're given certain powers um i would i would i would probably consider doing whatever we can to maintain control of this rather than having someone come in and accept in a severe emergency situation right. um, and regulate it ourselves because in, this, in, in a severe emergency you will find um, as we have in the past um, and I'll use the town of Palm Beach as a perfect example um, we went into a drought situation the South Florida management water management district uh, mandated that we issue citations for violations we as a town agreed amongst ourselves that that was the best priority and we would try and get some compliance and then those that absolutely refused got their citations uh, the town of palm beach became the poster child because people drove through and took video of estates watering all over the time all over the day and there were there were some boisterous folks up there who said you can't regulate us and i think that they they found that the court of appellate opinion didn't work well so there's a lot of different situations for this kind of stuff. Um, but see, we can talk about it some more. Um, but I don't know if I would. I, I would likely. I'm going to be based upon what you brought up. No, I'd like to get into the demolition before we. Yeah. Chief. So if thanks, you could, thanks. if you could defer this back to staff for extra review, sure, and we'll bring it back. Okay. Okay. Make a motion to defer. Yeah. yeah. I second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, so moving on to the number nine ordinance review demolition. Yeah. We need this. Yes, this has come to you based on our joint workshop meeting with the Town Commission and Planning and Zone Commission. Staff was directed to draft amendments to the, to the demolition code to ensure that the structure would be tied to demolition. We also looked at certain cases such as nuisance properties. Um, we just had one recently. Structures demolished with no plans for rebuilding right now. Um, we took that into consideration and added a requirement that if demolition is not tied to a new construction, then the empty lot requirements of the town code shall be met before a final inspection is approved for the demolition permit. I like what you've written. Yeah, I agree. Drive on south. Island Drive today certainly demonstrated in my store that Thank you. Uh, needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and hopefully this ordinance would 
Um, and preventative. Correct. Any other comments? Yes, I do. Um, I actually don't think it goes far enough. Um, it's 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 tying what should happen to start a better process, but it's not addressing what happens when it fails. And um, I think it needs to be more comprehensive. I think it needs to connect with 6711 and 6713 which are uh, construction abandonment and enforcement. Garani, uh, someone else mentioned Island Drive, so I won't. Uh, I'll, I'll just take the town as a whole. Do we have any uh, abandonment or blight actions going that are going to reverse what's there not just put a fence around it well um i've been using a pen knife instead of a screwdriver because i don't have the correct tool this helped a lot that that we there was no specific ordinance that dealt with someone applies for a demolition um so as building official, my primary um, code reference is the building code. So the building code does not require that when someone applies for a demolition permit, that they prove that they are going to rebuild within any given time. Correct. Right. That does not exist. So now we defer to the town ordinance. There was nothing specific also in the town ordinance that you know, did that. So we've been, you know, kind of pushing, you know, I mean, for example, um, um, 6009, you know, we kind of stretched our hand a bit and, you know, encouraged the contractor to make sure that he, he signed off on ensuring that certain things will happen after this demolition. But you know the, the attorney, you know, can you know, let us know whether or not we really not this, but they did agree to all this. But this helped a lot because now we can point to an ordinance. Um as to whether or not it goes far enough, I mean it, it is something that we could discuss, but I can you know say already it, it gives me a tool that you know I can work with to you know, yeah, prevent. No. The issues that we talked about specifically for those lots that you know they started demolition without the appropriate permit. That the next time a demolition comes in, we can point to this and say, You cannot have this permit because we have an ordinance that specifically says right. But, but even what's even what's with what's generated here, I'll come back to that other subject in a second and maybe Tracy can answer that. Um there's no no time specified that says. You, your permit expired, you didn't do anything or whatever. We're not saying that night, if you let it expire for 90 days after you knocked it down and you aren't restoring or whatever, that further action is gonna be taken. I'll go back to the, the joint meeting. We talked about a, surface, a, a bond or some financial mm -hmm. impact that occurs to, to get them motivated rather than waiting to go to a magistrate obviously on my street i don't know if i'm going to live long enough to see it go to a magistrate it's it's been sitting there now for two years uh, neil i think if you read this it says that the demolition cannot occur and unless it either meets uh empty lot requirements or the demolition permit is accompanied by an approved building permit. That doesn't mean just put your application in. It. No, I understand that. An approved building permit, and then once a, an approved building permit is issued, they have six months with that permit. But there's still nothing that's forcing them to perform. Well, this ordinance does because we can know bring this to the magistrate and then it's no $250 per day. Prior to this, we had nothing. I mean, they did not, we really did not have any tool to say you must 
you know, um, rebuild, you know, I mean, the demolition permit stood on its own. Again, you know, we, we, we could flesh this out, we could add, you know, a company. I mean, you, you've out. got in here that it's a good start. You have a phrase in here that said the permit is being sought, including a time certain within which new construction will be commenced and be completed. Why is it they? Why is it there a time certain specified in this in this ordinance? Where are you reading you? I'm sorry, I, I, I thought the same thing. Where are you reading? Page one. This is in the um, bottom paragraph. The addition, right? Using a time certain. So I guess. We can either put a time certain in here, or depending on the um you're never saying when the clock starts well, running is right. my point. The structure, well, it could be in the building permit. It may have to say it in the building permit, and it has to be a time certain that we would do. And we already have that on the board. Right. Because it depends. It depends on what avenues I guess they have to go to. Do they have to demote? Do they have to um add more fill. I mean it it would be very difficult to force a time frame in this section. We could put it in the application. Um we could put it in the site plan because this here on this is only this is for structures that are this is for vacant for lots that will have a new structure put on. So we just have to force them. I do and we do because we have the time limit for construction in our code already. So the different yeah, sections. Right. Yeah. And, and what this so is also saying. They have to reference it, reference that your point. Yeah. I have made the point. Is that this application will actually have to come here? If it's a new application, they'll have to come to the end. Right. So they're going to take it. I think there's you know, prior to the them the actually demoli the demolishing that structure. One thing that Neil mentioned, which is a bond or something. I've been mean, trying to think. I know some towns have that as a you know condition for any demolition. Yeah. It, um, that would be a I know I think time and then I think if we have a bond that we can use to remedy the situation. The process now, I mean it's it's I mean what what is it going to do? They can they could run the Demolition time out to where, and then the permit time out to where. You're still talking years, not months. I mean, there should be something there are, here that. I'm in favor of bonds, but you know, kind of like with the water storage issue, how are your um, constituents going to deal with that? It, 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 it can be a burden. Yeah, and I don't think we can certainly add bonds, but it just has its own. So I don't. That it's a burden to look at that. That's. <laughs> That has depressed real estate values in the north end of town unbelievably. I'll have to look back in a minute because we did discuss bond and I don't know if we had a, set, a consensus to move forward with the bond. It wasn't that meeting. Check again. I'll, I'll check again. No, I think the consensus was for us to analyze it more closely. I mean, this is a this. I'm not saying this isn't a step forward. I'm just saying it doesn't go far enough, and it's not right, comprehensive. But the enough. question is, what are you going to do with the bond? Are you going to go in and fix it? Because that's what the purpose of the bond is to say. Yeah, is I mean, well, what, what, are we, what are we doing if we go to a magistrate? Well, you may get fined on the property, right? If it but, is, but, what do we, but what what do we do with the money if we get it? We still let the thing sit there? Well, the, the run until it's fixed. We can put it back to a greenfield state. Somebody can if they're paid. The bond does ensure that the municipality has the ability to spend funds to rectify. Right. And that's by hiring a contractor. That's the problem. You can't. How, what is what is the cost of the bond if they perform as expected? Not not that much. It only becomes a burden on them if they don't. Do what they're supposed to do. I know, but what do you want to do with the bond once you get it? So they give us five thousand dollars. I don't think I, I think that that's that's token. That's a fine. That's not that's not a bond. Okay. All right, let's I, I think you're you're onto something, Neil. But I think um, it has to be something that's really clean and and upfront. 
so but, that people are yeah but let's discuss this what kind of bond are you looking for what what do you want to see as an end result with the bond i would like to see it go back to a green site if well first you have to if it's partial demolition you have to continue the demolition so that's a cost. correct and then you have to rectify the lot to look like a landscaped open space mm -hmm. Which um, it says here that they have to do. The that. bond would not preclude you from still going to a magistrate. Am I not correct? Correct. So, so it depends on the on stage that, that, that it would be, whether you're just ameliorating the damage that's been done or whether you're just getting started. But it 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 leaves us not empty, empty pockets and an eyesore that's not going to get remedied. Right now, there's no motivation. So, yeah. I think what you're talking, well, I, maybe it's not wrong. Maybe you're saying you want them to put up kind of like a deposit, and if they fail to comply, if you get to keep the money, that's like a penalty. Maybe a percentage of the permit fee. Mm -hmm. That's just a little bit of insurance. Right, right. Failure to provide. I mean, it's got to be something. A bond scares people, especially but private, private <laughs> residents or residential. And I know what you're suffering with, and I totally agree with it. It's 99% of the people in this town, with single family, are going to comply with whatever they've committed to. But if there was a additional fee. As part of the application, you know, that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. could be put aside and then returned, obviously, or um, what am I trying to say? Um, returned. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, after the on completion of the project, it, it, it's returned we, to the. We can't be the only town that's dealing with this or has dealt with it. There's got to be a, an ability for staff to find out how other communities are addressing this. Okay. Um, well, you know, mostly they just put they put liens on property. Yeah, and then they put, a, lien it, is your. It's it's your because goal. of incentive when you try to sell your house, when you try to refinance it, um, when you try to uh, get any type of a, a a loan at all, they look at it and they say you got you have to you got to clean this lien up. You know, they liens last for twenty years. And um, you can charge up to two hundred and fifty dollars a day. Okay. For well, a I know that another house in our two other houses in my neighborhood have been condemned. Is that not correct? Marlin and another one on Island Drive South that I won't give a number for now. They they also took in extremis. Mm -hmm. What? Is there any action being taken now to, to take this one to a, a judge? There is no current action, but it is something we can. You know, there is some what? There is no current action right now. I mean, he came to a magistrate for a few other issues. He's at the century, the correct word. Makes no sense what he's doing, but um, so we've been moving um, to get him motivated. And uh, he's already gone to manager and paid some fines already. So, you know, we'll, we'll be working on, on that also, that specific property going through. So we're not we're not moving to condemn it. Um, it's not on the table at this moment. All right. I think all right. Um and I don't want to diminish or demean this any because it's hugely important. Um it seems that we're not in a position to move this along to commission is that the feeling of the this commission well i don't or know do whether you... we only get one one shot at it or whether oh, we can whether we can that. pass this ordinance on to the town Perfect. and give the staff some uh some tools and then keep working it and trying to uh improve on it uh, it, it seems to me that okay. we don't have anything right now Correct. and this this is a substantial improvement. That's a step in the right direction. Sure it is. You know, it's, it's, I, I'm a party to that. I mean, it's 
it's it's stage one, but it's not it's not fixing it. It's only you're o- you're only incentivizing the player that probably would have done it anyway. Yeah, I I don't disagree with you, but I, I, I'd sure so, like to get get but, this but I would, the, the that, town commission. That pa- and passing this stops further reform of it. I can't support it. If if it, if this is a step one and we're committed to doing more, I'm, you have my, my support. You could uh, draft a motion that says that you recommend this ordinance to move to the town commission for approval and um, direct staff to review construction bonds and come back to you with that particular item. Bonds and fines. Not only bonds, but the time certain issue. Both. I'm going to look at that before. Thank you. Just to make sure that loose end is tied up. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Tied up. Okay, commission are going to have, town commission are going to have the same discussion we're having. Exactly. With nothing. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm all in favor of just, I mean, we need it. We need to, you, you, you defer it completely. Half, half cooked to the yeah, commission. Have it, come, have it come back to us. Okay. I'd rather defer it. Okay. I, I hate to say that, but uh, I just don't think there are legitimate points that Neil has brought up and, you know, how to hold an applicant you know, responsible okay. for inaction or whatever okay. the term is. Okay, so you want to so make a motion to defer? Hmm? Back to staff? I entertain a motion. To, I'll make a motion to defer. Mm-hmm. For the reason for, for the time certain definition and for looking at financial motivation in terms of a bond. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, meeting dates. Just tell us when we need to meet. <laughs> they work for me. I uh, already had them on the calendar. You must have given us these dates before. I've got problems with January. Uh, Jim, do you have any problem filling in for Neil if he has a problem with the January date? No. Okay. Since this? I don't have those dates, what's the January date? Uh, yep, January 11th and February 8th. And if you all approve, I will send out a sheet like I did last year of all the meeting dates for the next next year. That way, you all have the the full list. It should work for me. Thank, Thank you. you. It works in the end. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Third. Third. <laughs> uh, don't forget, we have to. Uh, yeah, this. To the infrastructure sort of okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let's make this. We can be quick. Yeah, this can be really quick. Um, first of all, we need a motion to adopt the minutes from December 16, 2019. I'll make the sole motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then if you all have before you the annual report that will be going to the town commission from the infrastructure surtax committee. Um, if you all approve the report, you can make a motion and a second to approve to go to the town commission. Can I just clarification? Yes. You know, we've been not acting on this or designating any improvements. Correct. It's all been we are um, I, I saving just the money. Go on record if we need to keep this kid alive. <laughs> yeah. and so until such time the commission town commissioner i just don't want anybody cherry picking this funding right now that's my feeling yeah, yeah. okay so i will put, i can put that in your report to the town commission <laughs> that you, you wish to <laughs> not spend any funds well i'd like to hear the rest of the commissions i you. agree if it's a windfall, we got to hold on to them. So is this a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. No, I think so. <laughs> who, who motioned and seconded? I made a motion. I second. Sure. <laughs> motion to adjourn this. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Yeah, I almost made you that.
Thank you. Mr. Morris, thank you for staying. You did a good job. Thank you for staying.